Hi, it's Kerno Tech here again with part six in the series of building Beyond Linux from Scratch. So in the past videos we've built up uh, Beyond Linux from Scratch our system with some um, configurations, some basic packages, a um, couple of desktop managers like DM and LXDM. We've installed a couple of window managers, Fluxbox and ISWM. And last thing we did was um, install a couple of desktop environments, X XFCE and LXDE. Um, we will be installing one further um, window manager and desktop manager, or desktop environment if you like, called KDE, the K desktop environment. Um, but I'll leave that towards the end. It's um, quite a large package although there's several um, quite a few individual packages as, as a whole it's about two or three um, large parts to make the whole um, package that's available and even then we're only installing a few packages that are in the um, BLFS book although it does give instructions for building the other packages that all the other apps that are available uh, to work with the KD and of course as we saw in the previous video um, just because an application says that it's for example an LXD application or a KDE application that doesn't mean that it won't run underneath another de desktop environment or window manager so um, there, there's no limitations there they just happen to be written by the same um, organization that um, creates that particular uh, package. So today my intention is to um, uh, build and install some office uh, software, office style software. I'm going to start off with a couple of um, more lightweight packages, so shall I say. Um, Abbey Word which is a word processor and Numeric which is a spreadsheet. And as I said, they're, they're relatively lightweight. Um, after that I'm going to be installing, building and installing LibreOffice which is a heavyweight because it has I think six six packages um, which are all built as part of the one build. Um, depending on time uh, I plan on also building and installing Firefox and Thunderbird. So Firefox um, I presume you know it's, it's a well-known browser and Thunderbird is a uh, an email client from the same stable as Firefox, the, the Mozilla Foundation. So I'll see how I go. I hope to get all these done today. Um, but let's let's see see how things pan out. Hopefully we won't um, have the sort of problem I encountered yesterday with the uh, very unusual um, case that uh, one of the builds wasn't working yesterday which I couldn't account for the reason for why that was happening apart from as I said yesterday in the previous video the um, the fact that it, it must have been VirtualBox um, but anyway let, let's hope just hope that doesn't happen so let's start by booting the machine Okay, so once again it's come up with this reduced uh, video mode. So let's log into BLFS, uh, yeah, into BLFS user, into LXDE, and let's immediately log out again. Oh, actually, that had reset, didn't it? I just realised. Never mind. Let's go back in again. I was on autopilot there, just knew, knew I needed a reboot, and in this situation I didn't. So, um, the first thing we should do is load up the browser. So that's okay. Let's just bring that down a little bit. Let's load up a Let's carry on using LX terminal. I'll load top in that one just to uh, say monitor it. I believe when we 
come to install Firefox, I seem to remember there is a um, a warning there about the final linking stage can use oh, I didn't want to tell, I wanted a new window uh, there is a warning about the fact that the final linking stage in Firefox can use quite a bit of memory, I can't remember exactly how much it is but that is a point where if we're using multiple cores we may possibly run out of space so that's definitely a time we want to keep an eye on the memory it may even go to swap um, now the back end hard disk I'm using here is, a, is an SSD so that shouldn't be too much of an issue in terms of um, how much that will slow the build down um, obviously if, if you're using a mechanical disk that will severely impact the performance if you do run out of memory and um, you find that processes are starting to have to swap to uh, swap out to the swap file so um, something to bear in mind and we have only got one more one one gigabyte more over the the memory we've got so it's it's a it's a reasonable, reasonable amount, amount to give us a warning that something needs to be done um, if it happens what I might try and do is uh, try and create a swap file before it actually does run out of memory so that's one way we could get around it um, while it is still building right so that's an 80 column window let me oh, one, let me increase the yeah I did it again then I made the window bigger and I shouldn't have done on the vertical so that should be adequate Okay, so let's look for these packages They're near the bottom, I think, I thought they were. Okay, so they are under X Software, section 11. So the first one we're going to look at is Abbey Word. So there's quite a few downloads for this one, and let's have a look at the dependencies. So let's go to our sources directory make it easier to check what we've got now boost I think we've already done yep forbiddy we've done G office we haven't done I think that's a um, like an abstract package to help uh, with helper functions for office type software WV we haven't done recommended enchant we haven't done WV and Enchant. No, we've not done those two. And then we've got a few optionals. And it says here to enable many of the option, optional dependencies, review the information from the configure help. For the necessary switches, you must pass the configure switch. So it may be the case that we need to do that to identify, because we have got some of these optional packages installed, such as these two. Libtree Crypt is installed, LibSoup is installed. So we may need to just inspect that as it suggests in the note to see if there's any switches to turn on to make use of these optional packages. Okay, so let's now go to Enchant. And this Glib we've got recommended A spell which we haven't got. No. So let's get that one up. So that just requires which we've which we have so let's begin by downloading a spell now you'll probably notice that as we're getting around to doing these bigger packages they obviously take longer um, the dependencies they need are all right a minute. that's a that's not a file the dependencies they need I tend to get bigger because if you think about a hierarchy the the dependencies at the bottom of the tree if you like are the smaller packages and as you go up the, the packages that depend on those smaller ones tend to get bigger and then right at the top are the big apps which um, need all these other other um, packages as support it's what tends it's not a strict rule but it tends to be what happens the, the higher up the tree the 
the package is, the more complex it is, and therefore the more it has dependencies or requirements for dependencies below it, and the more complex the package is, and therefore the bigger it is. So we'll tend to find that they take longer to build. So we've got the A spell um, source tarball. So this additional download, it says you need at least one dictionary. So the link below will take you to a page containing links to dictionaries and many languages. So I'm going to center click that to bring that up in a new tab in the browser. And I want to download an English one for the United Kingdom. Now it's a bit strange again, English seems to have a bad rap sometimes. Um, see there's Portuguese there, Portuguese Brazilian and Portuguese Portuguese I presume that one is so but there's no ENGB um, in this directory listing but I believe if we go into EN that's where we can find I oh know it's not there I thought this might be where an ENGB dictionary was so it looks like we are stuck actually I think what it is the ENGB is within the tarball here so Looks like the most recent one I've got is this one here. So let's copy that link and fetch it. And I'll just inspect that to check that it has got a, a British dictionary inside it. And yes, I can see straight away it's mentioned a VNGB there, Canadian. So this has got all the English variants inside it, even Australia there, but looks of it as well. Yeah, Australian variant. So that's okay. So let me just remove that. Close that down because I know I've got the right one. And I can start with the installation. So let's extract the main table. And First, we've got some sets to fix some problems with GCC 7. I imagine that's all the later GCCs as well. So, but the current one we've got is GCC 8. Just type minus minus version. GCC minus minus version. Yeah, we've got version 8.2 we're running. So, we have just got a configure and a make here. Let's see if there's any other options for the configure. Nope. So we can run these two commands in. Okay, so that's installed. Um, let's now, um, sorry, that's built. Let's install this. But looks like, um, just checking. There's nothing here about the dictionary. So sudo minus a su. Uh, And we'll just copy all those installation commands in. So if you do not plan to install iSpell, then copy the wrapper script iSpell. If you do not plan to install spell, then copy the wrapper script spell. Right, what's iSpell? I spell as a wrapper around A spell to invoke it in the I spell compatible mode. Right, 
I'm not sure whether we need that or not. We do not plan to install ice bloom. Well, let's assume we do plan to install it, so what that means we would leave the, these commands out to install them. I'm not sure what these, I presume they're just um, different names for the same program by the sounds of it. So, if you do not plan to install spell, yeah, let's just leave that. It does say that it installs. Uh, I spell and spell. Let's see if we can uh, find those. So let's do update db. I don't know if you noticed that this update db is taking longer and longer because we're storing more and more files on the system. We're creating more and more files. So let's look for I spell. Yeah, that's found. Oh, that's the source directory so there there it is there so it's obviously installed it so that's okay and the other one was just called spell oh yeah that would find a load wouldn't it <laughs> okay user bin Where's the other one? Use a lib. So let's grab this through um, user. Let's do that. And lib. Let's try that. I can't actually see that one there. Um, it'll be here when it, yeah, there it is. So that's that's okay. That's in the same location as the other one, I spell. So that's that's fine. So after a spell is installed, you must set up at least one dictionary. Install one or more dictionaries by running the following commands. So we need to come out of the root. Let's extract the dictionary here where we are. So it's a spell six en cd into it. So we do a configure and make in the dictionary tarball as well. It looks like that's done, it's nice and quick. And install it with make install. Yep, that's done. Okay, that one's done. And now we've got enchant. So we've got the uh, dependencies fulfilled. Let's fetch that one. So the configure, we've not got any extra information about the switches to make any changes so let's configure and build it Okay, that's finished. So let's now install Enchant. So 
So configuration, you can test your installation configuration by creating a test file and running the commands in the following. You can replace the ENGB dictionary by any other downloaded when installing a spell. So yeah, this is using the ENGB dictionary, which suits me fine. Obviously, if you're using a different language dictionary, you'd, you'd need to change these two parts here. So I'm going to copy all of that in. And, oh, didn't do that very well. Let's try that again. So what's it done? That's where we've copied a file in. And it looks like it's scanned these words and these are the suggestions it's coming up with. So for a bot, it's come up with a abbot, a bot, about, bot, a bet, a but, cabo, jabot, sabot, sabo. So, and there, T H E R, it's come up with some suggestions. AR, yeah, it's also come up with. Even so, looks like it's uh, looking for. Oh, yeah, maybe it thinks that's how R is spelt, the letter R, A A R. Um, although, or, it's, that, that's like um, a sound alike type of thing. Um, and then commands, it's come up with some suggestions, commandos, commands, commits, etc. So that seems to be working quite well. Okay, so let's remove that. I think it will probably fail because I created that text file as a no, it did work. Um, right, so enchant can go. So WV package contains tools for reading information from an MS Word document. And we need libgsf, which I don't think we have. No, but we've got libpng. So libgsf need glib. We've got libxml2. We've got gdk pix buff. We've got. Let's just check that. Gdk. Yep, that's there. So we can fetch libgsf. Okay, so two switches that are the usual, one to disable static libraries and one for the API documentation, so don't want either of those. So WV So this is a very simple installation Okay, that's done. So we can now install that one. And that's done. So now we've got G Office. This needs librsvg. We've got libxslt. We've got and which we've got. And we've got all the optional packages that are in the BLFS package, uh, BLFS manual. Sorry. So we can. Go ahead with downloading this one straight away. And 
a nice simple install and build command again. Okay, so now we can install and tidy up now. So we should be in a position now to um, install Abbey Word and so there's quite a few items to download here so there's the main tarball got some documentation and two sets of patches First thing we need to do is to extract the main tarball, which is that one there. And if you remember, it says here about examining the output of configure to look for any necessary switches to pass onto the configure script. So they've just got one without evolution data server. Um, they've given an extra one here, enable plugins, collab, open XML, G Office and Grammar, build some or all plugins. The open XML plugin enables Abbey Word to open some docx files. The grammar plugin requires link grammar parser. So we've got to leave that one off because this is an external link, it's in um, bold. Uh, there it is again, so we won't need that one. Um, but let's look at the configure help to see what other options are available. Let's pipe that through less to do a page at a time. Um, so these are all pretty standard for a configure script. Once we get down to the optional features, is where things start to look a bit different so we've got to look out for thing, anything mentions dbus, glib, gobject, introspection, gcrypt, um, libicow I don't think we've got that installed let's see what that does. Connected implementation of the icon and the protocols and data formats that may be, may be useful to you if you're building a system to use you may want to install that I'm not, not going to bother with it. So let's just have a quick scan down here. So there's that enable plugins, was it or built in plugins? Yeah, enable plugins. So that's one we're going to be adding in, but without the grammar option. <coughs> so 
So there's things here like enable clip art. Now that may just enable some internal stuff or it may require an external library. Um, so we could try that and if it fails we know it needs something else. Um, in fact, it could be any one of these here. None of them look like they might be to do with clip art, but then I don't recognize some of them. So we can try that one. Um, there's some other things here. Yeah, there's things here like this red, red land. That's something that's optional. So this, that's an example of one of the things it's mentioning. Redland, what's that do? Set of free software, C libraries are price support for the resource description framework. Um, come to think of it, I have a feeling that Redland's needed by something else that we're going to install, so I think I might install that one. Um, yes, that Rascal looks familiar as well. And Raptor, that looks familiar, so let's install those and then we can come back to um, configuring Abbey Word. So I'll do Q there. Let's remove the directory. And let's install these dependencies. So we've got curl, we've got libxslt. So let's fetch this one. So we can build Raptor with this config command. We've got an extra switch here. Use this switch if you installed ICU 631 and wish to build Raptor with its support. So I think that might be a good option. It's optional, yes, but we have got ICU, so why not incorporate it? So there's the configure command and there's the additional command to enable ICO. Okay, so there's no, oh yes there it is there, NFC check library ICO 6.31, sorry 6.3.1. So now let's uh, make the package. And we can now install it. Okay, that's finished. Rascal, what's this for? C library. Okay, so let's fetch that. So we've got the optional packages anyway, so Let's just copy and paste this. I mean, you could check the config of every single package you install to see if there are any switches that enable stuff that you've already got installed. That's not mentioned in the BLFS. The only caveat there is that you may enable or link something that could conflict with something else in the BLFS book. Um, so that's the thing with the BLFS book. If you do veer off what's mentioned in there, you are sort of kind of on your own really. Um, so as this is an example, I'm just sticking really with what's with the book. Um, and certainly if you've never done this before, we'll just stay with the defaults. That are suggested don't don't veer too far from uh, 
what the book says. So we've installed that. That's okay. Obviously, once you gain confidence with this, if you do this a few times, you you, you, know, you obviously gain the confidence to have a play around with things. So that's Rascal. Let's install Redland. Got a few optional packages there. So let's just go with the installation. Okay, so it's a nice simple installation again. install it. Right, so let's go back to every word. Editor, it might be worthwhile building this. Um, no, it doesn't look like we've got a text editor, unfortunately. I think we do get one installed as part of KDE, but obviously not with these smaller packages. So let me um, get a new tab up. Let's just get a random document up on Vi and we can uh, insert things here so what I'll do is put this config in here go back and um, we can put this in the Redlands because we've got that installed now So there is a with GTK2 switch there, but I imagine that will be picked up automatically because it's not mentioned in um, the command explanations. Let's grab this one here as well. So taking out the grammar part. Not sure what the collab part is. So there might be something else that needs to be removed. Uh, so what else was optional? So it says there's a boost option there, but boost is required, so I can't think that we need that. Um, live by cow. Where's G Office? Well, that's in that. Enable plugins part, so I don't think we need to specify again. So libgcrypt, but it needs a prefix of where it's installed. We've got libgcrypt, so let's see where that gets installed. Directory. And it is the prefix it needs so I think all we need to do is to copy that paste that in and then copy this so let's see what else we've got Like that looks like that's it. The rest are just compilation flags. Quite a few of them actually. 
Okay, so let's go and see if this works. Uh, beg pardon. Some other things we need to do first. Um, so there's two patches. Let's do those two first. So they seem to have worked. Okay. Two sets. Yep. They seem to work. So now let's copy our configure command. Okay, well it's not complained about anything so that's a good sign. Let's just double check what the configuration status is at the end. So that looks all okay. Dynamic library we're building for Unix. It's found that we've got GTK so that's good. Debug, no we don't want that, we're not um, developing or anything. Optional features menu button. I would have thought we'd want something like that, but the sound of it, the clip art's not set. Oh yes, we didn't change that, we didn't set that, did we? And templates aren't set, so then may, maybe two things we want to um, uh, reconfigure and alter. In fact, three things, including the menu button. Uh, GOffice has been found from that um, plugins command and we've got the redlands been included as well so that looks okay I mentioned about the gcrypt so there's still a chance that this might fail during the make as it's not mentioned it in the config we don't know if it has recognized that path or not um, still not sure what that is but it seems to have accepted it um, so I'm going to run the configure help again and look for the new button, the clip art and the templates. Now looking at the enable plugins, there's quite a few options to add in there, but I don't think I'm going to go silly with this. And there's some that we've got like that one and that one, but um, I think I'll uh, leave that. So there's the enable menu button part. Let's add that into the command. Clip art and templates. So these, as I say, may require external libraries, but there's no mention in the configure. Um, and I guess the, well, I hope that the configure when it runs will be informative and tell us that we need them. So let's rerun the configure and include those two, uh, those three switches to see if uh, it updates configure. So again, I probably wouldn't normally go into this much detail, but it is a good example of how you can tweak the settings. And um, we are staying within the constraints of the book because it does say to to examine the configure for necessary switches to pass. So I think it's uh, quite all right to do that. So yes, we've got the menu button now, we've got the clip art, and we've got the templates. So the build's probably going to take a bit longer. It's got extra work to do, but we're going to gain extra functionality. So let's make this, and how long is this going to take? Oh, not too long. Oh, right, it's failed already, so it's obviously not liking something we've we've added in. And this is the risk we run of uh, adding extra switches. You've either got to decide you don't really want them or you've got to decide, well I've got to find out what else do I need to do to get that switch to work. So you can see we've got lots of errors here. 
So just scroll up to the top and find out what's causing this problem. There's nothing immediately obvious there, so it looks like it's all to do with GTK that's failing. Alright, it's failed on the toolbar by the looks of it, so maybe that's something we've got to leave out. Maybe there is a it's probably this menu button. Let's try removing that. Oh dear, that's too much. And so if that was an important option for you to have, you'd have to um, find out what that needs. And I would hope there's some mention of it in the documentation, telling what extra libraries you need for those switches. Right, so it's disabled the menu button, it's gone back to note. Let's retry and make. Yeah, we're not getting errors now, so that's obviously uh, an option that maybe needs another library. And indeed, it could be one of the optional libraries that we've not installed, whether it's one of the ones that are included in the BLFS book or one of the ones that are not included.
Okay, well that's built successfully, so that's good. Um, we can now install it. Right, and now we can um, install the local help files which we downloaded. So just copy all those commands in. Okay, and now we can install that. So, uh, configuring AB Word, it says there's a config file there that goes in the user's home directory in the hidden file AB Suite. Um, choose the right template for your language like how from the list produced by from the list produced by the following command. So Let's do this as the ordinary user. Oops. I closed that down, didn't I? Alright, let's get a new tab up. Can you move these terminals around? No, let's get with this one. Alright, okay, so we can do this command to find the list of languages, so mine is ENGB and it says create the folder every suite, templates then copy the normal AWT you want into it so we can copy that bit there so my language is EN underscore GB and then copy the rest of that command and press enter it says they change the lang with the chevrons by the command uh, the command above to fit the name of the file you want um, it says something there about using multiple languages um, if you have desktop file utils installed which looks like we have let's just check yes we have you should run the update desktop database to create the MIME info cache and allow the help system to work. And that will be as the user. Super user. So um, then we've got if you have XDG utils installed, which you have, we need to run this command as well installed icon to be displayed in the menu item so again as the root user it's worked so now in theory we should be able to go to the menu button here go to office and yes we've now got Abbey Word together with the icon so that's all worked so let's click on that and test it and looks like we've got a not fairly basic looks like it's got quite a few bits of functionality associated with it. It was certainly not a heavyweight um, word processor but you can see we can type stuff here. So there you go and we can highlight things, uh, make that bold, italics, underline it etc. Change the colour of the text yeah, so it seems to work fine. There's even some printer icons there, although I say we've got cups installed, but we haven't configured any printers, so there's no point to that. And it looks like the spell check's working because these words here are fine, but these words here, or these letters, groups of letters, have all got the red lines underneath, and there's a spell check button there. And you can see it's trying to suggest. Um, 
what we think that word might be. So, yep, let's just check those three words. Spelling checks complete. So that's all working fine as well. So that's that. And there's a save option there to save the document and so on. So that's fine. Let's close without saving. So we can now tidy up. Okay. So now we move on to the next. As again, so they're they're lightweight in terms of LibreOffice, but these two packages, AbbeyWord and Numerica, perfectly adequate if you just want to do you know basic stuff, fairly basic stuff. Um, I'm not sure if they've got things like mail merge or you know any more advanced um, functions, but um, if you do need that sort of stuff, LibreOffice definitely is quite capable of doing that sort of thing. It's even got a database for um, you know if you were doing mail merge store data, which um, uh, yeah you can store the database in there and uh, use it with mail merge. So. Um, but certainly from a lightweight point of view, the, these two packages are, are good if you're on a machine with a small disk, uh, you know, smaller amount of memory, the, these would be more than adequate to, to fulfill a function. So let's see the requirements for numeric. I think we've got ITS tool. Yep, and Rarian, I don't think we have, no, so let's get that. Of Excel sold T, we've got Docbook, that's okay. Now it says it recommends some icon themes. I think we've got some, if not all of these. Uh, so the add waiter, we've got Oxygen. Yeah, we've got them. Looks like we've got the GNOME icon. Yeah, we've got the X window system and we've got Yelp as well. I thought we had Yelp, perhaps we perhaps we haven't. Uh, okay, I thought we had that. Right, let's build that for inbuilt help. So that, that could be quite useful. Uh, so there's a few option things, uh, optional packages here. Uh, that one's for testing. We've got that one. Uh, file grinder don't use. Not sure if we've got that or not, or even if we need it. So I'll ignore that. Excuse me a moment. <coughs> so let's go to installing Yelp. We need. WebKit GTK Plus. I think that's quite a heavyweight package that I have a feeling that will take a while to build. And Yelp XSL we haven't got. Uh, recommended, but looks like we've got that. Yep. GTK Doc we've got. So it says the Yelp package is not required for a functional GNOME desktop. But without Yelp we will not be able to view the built-in help provided by Core GNOME and many of the support applications. So as I say, although WebKit GTK I think is going to be a big package to install, it sounds like it's worth building. So let's go and install Yelp XSL. We've got both requirements, so let's start building it. And this looks like it's a straightforward package to build anyway. And I'm just going to tag, oh no, yes I can, I can tag on sudo minus e make install. So as long as the make install works we can, yep it has, the make has worked. Yep, so the installs work, so that's all done, nice and easy. So that's Yelp XSL. So WebKit GTK, yeah, this takes 25 SBUs, so it's, well, it's hard to tell how long it's going to take. It seems um, some packages 
the large packages I noted were taking about an hour or so to build when I was testing this. Seem to be taking a lot longer, like an hour and a half, hour and 40 minutes, um, nearly two hours. So I can only put that down to the fact that the screen is being recorded and that's what's taking up or making the builds run a lot slower. I, I noticed during the time I was building, uh, recording Linux from scratch, it took much, much longer than when I was testing. Um, that's despite the fact that Linux from scratch is only on one core and we've got four cores here, but I'm on a machine with, um, well, eight cores. It's four cores plus uh, t two hyper threads per core. So it's, um, it's a bit strange why it is taking substantially longer, but there you go. Just one of these things, I guess. So this, this may take an hour for me to build. Uh, and the CPU I've got here is old anyway. It's about, I don't know, seven or eight years old, I think. So it's not bang up to date, but it's certainly not not slow. Um, okay, this has got lots of requirements, actually, including another language we need to install Ruby. Um, so let's check what we've got. Cairo we've got, CMake we've got. GST plugin base, we've got, I'm pretty sure, yeah, pretty sure I've got that, yeah. Right, we haven't got GST plugins bad. Uh, why is that not working now? That's GST plugins. No, we haven't got bad, so we need that one. Two GTKs we've got, ICU we've got, LibGU, Dev we've got, Secret looks like we've got, Soup, LibWebP, I think we installed that, yeah we did. Mesa we've definitely got, because that was needed for Xorg, so Ruby we haven't, SQLite I think we have, yep, and which we've got. Enchant, recommended, GeoClue we haven't, I think that's for... Yeah, location aware. I probably wouldn't really need that, but um, we'll install it anyway. Object interest spectrum we've got a hard, hard icon theme and libnotify we've got, and then some optionals. I think we've got all of those ones that are part of the BLFS book, so we're good to go with this now. So this needs JSON glib. We haven't got that, so we need that one. It recommends Modem Manager, which we haven't got. No. And Avahi, which we haven't got. Okay, so let's see. Glib we've got. Object introspection we've got, GTK2 we've got, libdaemon we haven't. Oh yes we have, okay. Let's just double check what's installed for that, I don't remember doing that one. Um, so, yep that's definitely there. And libglade we've got, so I think it looks like we can install this. Oh, have we already? Oh, it looks like we've already installed Navahi actually. So let's remove that duplicate file. And let's also check that the libraries or programs are actually installed. Looks like a load of programs. So locate, let's look for the first one. Yeah, that's there. Okay, that's good. It saves us a bit of time. Let's look for that one as well. Yep, yeah, okay, so Vahi's definitely installed. So modem manager needs libgu dev, which we've installed. libgu dev, yeah. So recommended, got that one, we haven't got that one, haven't got that one. Pole kits we have, haven't we? Yeah, and Valor we have. 
So lib QMI. What do we need here? Glib and lib MBIM, which was the other one we've got. So let's move that there. This needs libgu dev. Okay, so let's start with this one. So lib mbim. Okay, so the usual two um, commands in the explanation. So let's just configure and make. <clears throat> Right, and we can install that now. Make install. And that's done. So, lib qmi is got its dependencies satisfied. So let's fetch it and extract it. Okay, we've got a simple command. We've got an extra option here. This switch to disable support for using the MBIM control device for QMI messages. Use this switch if we did not install lib MBIM. Right, so we've got it, so we don't need it, so we can just do this. And let's do the install in one hit as well. Okay, so it's all done, configured, built and installed. And we can clean up now. So next we've got Modo Manager. So we've just installed the remaining dependencies for that. And this looks like it's just going to be a copy and paste again. Capsule them this one. So again, I'm just going to copy this all in and do everything in one go. So that should be ten percent, ten percent.
Okay, that's all built and installed successfully. So tidy up. Chase on Glib. So this requires Glib. We've got object introspection. We've got and that one. We've got as well. So we can fetch and extract. Let's paste this in and once again I'm just going to do this all in one go. It's done. Obviously, when you're um, building this for the first time, it's uh, probably a good idea to read everything that's on the page, just to get to know what the package is doing and anything else about it that's you know of interest. Otherwise, it's you probably find it's pretty pointless just pasting these commands in and getting something. Apart from the fact of knowing that you've built something from scratch, um, it's just nice to know why you're doing things, what what these things are doing what facilities are providing and so on. So we're going to do this geo clue now. We've got all the, um, yeah, I think we've got everything there, in fact, already installed. So let's fetch it. And again, oh, right, okay, we've got some different command explanations here. Let's see what options we can do here. So the switch disables the 3G backend use. If you've not installed the manage, manage, modem manager package, we have. Okay, these are all to disable. So maybe we didn't need to install modem manager, even though it said it was recommended. Um, and again, we have installed the of our heat package so we don't actually need to do anything else so let's just build that sorry configure that rather and run ninja to build and install it okay is that done So Ruby, this needs, oh right, they're optional, there's no other requirements, so I think I'm just going to go with this, as it is. So we've got some additional commands. Let's see if we can take advantage of anything extra. So disable install doc. This switch disables building and installing our doc indexes and C API comment uh, documents. So we probably don't want that. Yeah, that's an option to build them. So we don't need the C API. Disable install RDoc. This switch disables installing RDoc indexes. Not sure what that is. Disable. Oh, I see. Does this is, this looks like it? In, it disables both the RDoc and the CAPI, whereas these ones dis disable them individually. So uh, I'm not sure what RDoc is. So maybe Ruby documentation possibly. So I think I might just put this switch in to disable the C API and leave the RDoc assuming it is Ruby documentation.
Right, so there's a status output of the configure. You may want to look at that if you are reconfiguring stuff or putting extra flags in. So let's just run make now. Right, so that's built. Um, we're not going to build the CAPI, so we'll skip that command and we'll just go and make install. Okay, that's done. So now we're going to install GST plugins bad and we've already got the base 
uh, recommended. We haven't got the DVD read or DVD nav. Got LLVM. We haven't got sound touch. So let's see what these need. Open MP. We don't need because it's off the BLFS manual. Fetch this. Yep. Alright, big caution here. The bootstrap command below fails if the AC local environment rule is set as specified in XORG 7. If it is used, AC local needs to be unset for the package and then reset for other packages. So let's look to see if we have got that it doesn't look like we have no so let's just see if this bootstrap command works by itself let's just have a look at this as well see if we've missed something out I hope not Okay, this is for if we haven't used the default forward slash user prefix, so it looks like that's why we haven't got it set, so that's okay. It's always worth checking in case there is something we've missed. So let's run this bootstrap command now. Okay, yeah, it hasn't failed, so that's fine. So, enable OpenMP, that was the external optional yeah, package, so we can just configure and make. And now we can install the package. So libdvd nav, well, we have got a optical drive, I'm not sure whether it's defined as a CD drive or a DVD drive, but we'll install this anyway. Um, it's very likely you're going to be building this on a machine, if you're real, building on a real machine that has got an uh, optical drive of sorts. So it actually needs libdvd read first, so let's just move that there and go to libdvd read. So straightforward, copy and paste. And I'll install it as well all in one go. Okay, it's done. So lib DVD nav. Again, straightforward configure and make, and I'll do the install again. done. So now we're ready to go. There's lots of optional uh, packages there but apart from them we're ready to go. Um, a lot of these are multimedia packages. Um, I was thinking about whether to install a separate uh, multimedia package such as M Player or 
um, is it VLC I think it is um, but it needs to make them useful to allow them to play all the different formats it need they, they both need a lot of these packages and they're quite tiny and it's a, a lot more manual work so I'm kind of verging on the thought of not not doing that it's uh, a lot of work just to show that you, know, you can get a video playing on the on this example so um, I'm tending not to want to do that and if you did want to play a video we've already got um, I think we have, have we? So, yeah, sound of it. yeah that's right a media player there in parole so um, may not be as capable as the other two I've mentioned but it's a start and if you do want to install that I hope um, you know, what you've seen in these videos is enough to help you to um, install install that yourself so let's get this package and a patch and again as before with the other two plugins the good and the um, oh no sorry the yeah, there's three plugins, uh, three additional G Streamer packages that go with the base. There's the good, the bad, and the ugly. We're installing the bad. I don't think we've installed the ugly, but we've definitely installed the good. Uh, but with all of them, it says here if you, if you want to use a plugin for a given dependency, you need to have that package installed before you install this. So let's um, extract this. Just to Plugins. Yeah, we haven't installed the ugly one, so I'm not sure, can't remember if that's needed for another package or not. So let's run this patch in, and got a lovely big configure there. Again, there's some freeform text. Uh, parameters with some of these switches so you may want to adjust that again they've got the package origin as the development path which is again strictly not true because that's changing daily I believe so um, it could be the case that the GStream of bad plugins has already been updated to a different version to the one that's in the uh, BLFS 8.4 manual um, so you may want to adjust these to be more accurate or put your own name in there for example uh, you know the fact that you've built it yourself using the BLFS uh, hints in this manual so I'll just copy as it is um, command explanations disable Wayland we've got that so we don't need to disable it and open CV that's a computer vision package um, don't believe we're going to be installing that so um, looks like we only need to supply that switch if we've got it installed but without the additional modules so we don't I don't think we need to add anything there let's just run the configure and the make
Okay, so that's finished installing. Let's, uh, sorry, building. Let's install it. Uh, oh no, did I? No, I didn't make the uh, install command on there, so. Okay, so that's done now. Um, so it looks like we've got everything installed that's um, required. Everything's installed for the recommended as well, and we've got everything that's in the BLFS book that's optional as well. So we can go with this web kit, which as I say has got 25 SPUs, it's one of the bigger packages we're going to install. So not the biggest, but big enough. Okay, let's this now. Uh, let's see what options we've got. So lib hyphen equals off, which we've got there. It turns off support for automatic hyphenation because of an external package that's external to BLFS. Um, enable mini browser. Enables mini browser compilation and install. So we've got that. Use libnotify equals off. Use this switch if you not if you have if you do not have libnotify installed. Notify. We've got that installed. So lib notify is not mentioned there, so we don't need to add that or change it. Use system malloc on. Use switch enables building against the system installed malloc. Now it's not there, but I've seen them use the LFS team, BLF, BLFS team use the system. I think there's memory allocator. Um, so I might actually add this one. Um, so geolocation equals off. If you didn't, if you don't want to install GeoClue, well, we've ended up installing it because it was uh, recommended. So we'll, we'll leave that in. Enable GTK doc on for the API documentation. So I presume that's not in there, and it's not. And use W off to. Use this switch if the optional package WAF or again it's external is installed. Um, so they've got it switched off. So the only one I'm tempted to add to that is the malloc one using the system malloc. Um, there's no explanation as to why they've not used it. As I say, they normally um, uh, use the system malloc I've seen before. So um, but it doesn't say, obviously it doesn't say don't use it, it's, it's given here as an option, so I don't think there's any harm in adding it in. So let's try that out.
Okay, so there's some um, various options that have been turned on and off. So you can see the geolocation is on. It's probably neither here nor there, to be quite honest, especially with a fixed PC, unless you've got some actual GPS means, uh, like a mobile phone would have. Um, I think the geolocation is normally guessed by IP address. Otherwise, um, open GL's on, so that's, that's good. Got spell check, touch events again, probably not appropriate so much with a desktop. Wayland's turned on, web driver, web audio, web cryptography, X11. So there, the hyphenation's not turned on, and the W off to whatever that is, is off as well. So let's. Um, Build that with Ninja. Uh, I'm going to time this just to see how long it actually does take.
Okay, so that's built now. Um, we can actually test it by running a mini browser that's in the source directory, which should have been built. So let's have a go at that. Uh, all right, we're already in the build, so let's try that. No, it's not working either. Um, apparently it says if launching it fails, there's a problem with the build, but looks like it's trying to build the libraries that are part of what we've just built. Um, <clears throat> let's try it from this directory. No, it's not having it. So what we can do is let's install it and see if that makes a difference with the testing. Um, right, so there's a note here. When installing the make file, does some additional compiling and linking. If you do not have Xorg in user, the library path and package config path variables need to be defined for the root user. If you're using sudo to assume root, then pass the E option to pass your current environment variables. Right, so we're in user, so it's not a problem. So let us become the super user. And let's just check we have got, we should have the Xorg variables, but yeah, they're there. Fix for configuration and prefix the is the destination. So that's okay. So we can install this package now. So that's done. Let's try the. Oops, try the um, demonstration again. Um, in mini browser. Yeah, see now it's working because the libraries are installed. So it's it's finding the its own libraries that we actually built. It's finding where it expects to find them. So that makes sense. It's a bit fiddly to try and grab the corner. So um, and it's taken us to the WebKit GTK.org website. So let's just see if we can yeah click on stuff cursor doesn't change but then it says it is a mini browser so it's also a basic browser so that looks all good okay um, doesn't there's any further configuration no we can um, remove this now okay So let's install Yelp. That has its um, requirements satisfied. Ah, oh, that's why I thought we'd installed Yelp. It was Yelp XSL we'd actually installed in the previous video, so that's the confusion there. So we've read that note. Um, okay, so usual uh, disable static and build in the API doc switches on the configure. So let's configure and make. Right, so we can install this package now. So that's complete. And now we can install Rarian or Rarian. We've got both of the recommended packages so we can 
jump straight in and fetch the package. <clears throat> so there's no extra command explanations above the usual one. So we'll just copy and paste the build um, commands. And we can now install it. And that's done. Oh, I wonder why that keeps happening. Oh, I know why. I keep on doing Control D when I'm um, actually the uh, normal user, thinking that I'm the uh, super user. Right, I don't want that. I want a new window. So, excuse me while I set this up again. Right, this this LXD doesn't seem to have snap on the window, so whether that's an option or not, I don't know. Let's see if the preferences here. No, I wouldn't have thought it'd be here. But maybe under here, preferences. Uh, Desktop preferences, it might be there. No, um, not to worry. Um, I just have to remember not to I'll be careful when I press Control D that the uh, BLFS user is not actually active. Right, so let's try that again. CD sources BLFS. That's RF Rarian. That's better. So now we can get rid of that tab, and I think we're in a position now to. Yep, install numeric. So we start by fetching it. There's no other files. So this one takes, oh, I was quite a quick one, this one. So um, there's just one switch, uh, it says it uses DB Latex, which we've not installed, won't do because it's an external link. Uh, so we can just use the default configuration and make.
Right, that's built successfully, so we can install that. And that's finished. So if we go to the start menu and office, we should see numeric there. Yep, and it's got an icon as well. So I'll click on that, and there we have a spreadsheet. So I'll just do a quick test. A few simple formulas in that looks okay. Yep, that looks good. Oops. That looks all good to me and got the pretty basic or standard rather standard functions available on these uh, toolbars here so um, I think that's all done the looks of it shut that down discard the changes and close the tab so the next one I'm going to install is LibreOffice and this is a hefty package, this will take a while to build uh, so it's got 63 SBUs there, that parallelism 4 so um, let's start with the requirements dependencies, the actual requirements are quite minimal, it's the um, recommended which are probably all options but um, Again, it's probably, yeah, it's the same reason again that these won't need to, if we have these installed already, um, LibreOffice will use the system libraries, but if they're not found, it will use its own libraries, and again, we we risk build, increasing build times, it says there, disk space, um, as well as obviously potential security holes if the bundled versions of these packages are a little bit out of date. So uh, let's start by in, uh, pulling down all the files that we need. I'll do these one at a time just to ensure that they do come down correctly because they're quite big and there's quite a few of them. So this is the largest, this is 204 megabytes, the others are quite large sizes as well. So the main files downloaded fine. Let's get the dictionaries. And 
and help files. And translations. So you might not need this if you're in the US. Um, I'm assuming that things I'm in the UK that will include um, ENGB as a translation. Or it might be that you just want to install all the translations anyway. Yeah, I've just seen the first recommended package, Apache Ant, and that needs Java to run. Um, and it's just reminded me that when I did build this, uh, when I was testing this, it was failing because of the problems I was having with the, <clears throat> I presume it's the Java compiler, but certainly with the, um, the uh, JDK package, that the binary package that was installed. So... Um, whether, again, I don't know if it's VirtualBox, but I've never seen these errors before. Um, I haven't installed the, this newer version of BLFS 8.4 or any of the recent ones. As I, say, I haven't um, used BLFS for about 10 years or so, I think. Um, I've never seen that problem. Um, so whether it is VirtualBox or if it is that binary in particular, or the binary is a bit incompatible with VirtualBox, I don't know, but it is very strange. Both products are from Oracle, so I can't really explain it. Um, but I, as I said, I did get LibreOffice to run just by rerunning the uh, build command. Um, but it did involve rebooting the machine, unfortunately. And if, if the guru, uh, little guru man comes up again, then that that's more or less mandatory to reboot the machine. I, I tried once to carry on. After that appeared by clicking the ignore button, and the, I think the machine just locked up, so I had to shut it down anyway. So um, a reboot is probably a safer way to go at that point. Restart the machine, and see if uh, it can carry on and get past the, the bit that fails. It's kind of like a bit like the error in the previous video. It seems to be some memory-related thing where you do something different, or you load it up afresh, and it's like the memory is in a different state and it can it can cope and carry on a bit better. I've, I've tried changing the uh, amount of memory in the virtual box and that didn't seem to make any difference. So it's just something unfortunate you have to live with if you're um, building on, on the virtual box. As I say, with a real machine, I wouldn't expect these little oddities to happen. Um, especially the way they seem to be so random. It, you know, if it was a real machine, I, I would point. I would look at straight away it, be, it being a hardware problem, either memory itself or the CPU, for example, cache. I've known CPU cache to go um, funny before on on CPUs, so it, it would indicate that on a real machine. But in a virtual machine, could be anything. So let's uh, now we've downloaded them. Check the required. Um, dependencies so archive dot zip we haven't got unzip we have but let's just double check these things wget we've got because we're using all the time which we've got and zip we've got so okay archive zips a Perl module and it's got a dependency another Perl module so let's get that up and okay, there's quite a few dependencies here. Let's just check because these links don't look like they're working. It may be CMonkey and it's not um, putting the, uh, I don't know what they're called, are they chapters, I think. The links that are in the middle of the document, it may not be rendering the page correctly at the correct point, so it could be what it is. Uh, so Perl modules needs test mock module, test mock module. Yeah, it's uh, quite a bit off the looks of it. Are they in alphabetical order? They are. So it's there. So, okay, that looks a bit better. It needs module build, something called super and test warnings. So again, the 
um, links don't seem to be working correctly so let's just they seem to be too high up yeah test warnings that hasn't got any dependencies super was the previous one so let's scroll down yeah that needs something called like sub identify sub identify that hasn't got any requirements uh, the one prior to that was module build module build and that hasn't got any requirements so I think test mod module test mod module yeah, I think that's all the Perl modules we need so these are a bit fiddly because they're quite small and quite quick to install so there's lots of typing in a small space of time because uh, it don't take long to to build. Let's start with test warnings. Let's just double check. So identify. Yeah, test warnings. So copy that link. Paste it. Okay, I think all these installation stru instructions are identical, so I'm going to put the install command in as part of the chain of commands. But I'll have to double check each time, just make sure they are identical. Just inspect each command. So let's build and install that one. Okay, that's fine. So the next one we've got is sub identify. So let's recall that Perl command. So it's perl make file.pl make make test and make install so that looks the same. So that's fine. So now we've got something called super. command again pull make file dot pl make make test and make install and it's done so now we've got what's happened here well, I shut down the wrong one so this needs test mock. I think I've shut down the wrong uh, yeah, the wrong tab it looks like. So test mock module module build is what I need looks like. Yeah, I haven't built that one yet. I've done test warnings. So module build, right? Okay. Okay. Let's search for the Perl command again. Let's we've got Perl make file PL make, make test and make install
Okay, that's done. So now we can install test mock module. Right, these instructions look slightly different using a build command. So let's copy that into there. sudo minus a and install it. Okay, that's done. So we can close that and now we can install the package we needed, which is archive zip. So this looks like the original Perl command. Let's see if we can get that back. So Perl make file, make, make test and make install. So that's done. So that's all the required dependencies. Let's check all the recommended ones now. So we've got Apache Ant. Yeah, I'm going to bring these up in the background and close them down, I think. Just so the links change color to help. Right, APR we haven't got. Um, boost we have, C Lucene we haven't. No. Let's open that in a new window and close it down. Cups we have. Curl we have. So there's cups and there's curl. Dbus glib we have. Libjpeg turbo. Um, actually, I wonder if we can do this a better way. Uh, so let's check. Dbus glib is there. JPEG Turbo we've got and glue we've got so that's that one that one graphite we should have yep oops graphite Jesse plugins base we've got let's just check it there's nothing worse than thinking you've got something spending you know maybe an hour building something only for it to crash near the end because you haven't actually got the package you thought you have so it's it's worth spending a little bit of time you know five ten minutes especially on a big package like this just checking that you have actually got what you think you've got although of course like i say it doesn't prove that you've installed it just that you've downloaded the package with the method i'm using at the moment but it's uh this may be 95% foolproof and uh, if you are unsure, do as I've been doing, just update the uh, locate database and then use locate to, to um, search for either libraries or programs that are mentioned in the actual page of that package. So GST plugins base we've got, GTK 3 and 2 we've definitely got. Half buzz I know we've got. Let's check it because we there was a quite a big circular dependency with that. ICU we've got. We've checked that today already, I think. So Libatomic Ops. I'm not sure about that one. No, we haven't got that one. Uh, 
So LCMS 2.9. Yep. Let's just double check that is LCMS 2, yeah. LCMS. Oh, well, I clicked on, clicked on the wrong one. Let's close these down. Oh, Live Atomic, we needed that one. I'm doing it in the wrong window. That one there. LCMS 2, yeah, that is the right one. So, Live RSVG, we've got that. Yep. Live XML 2, we've got. There it is. Live XSLT, we've got. Mesa, we definitely have. Okay, is it capital M? No. Oh, I know it's part of the um, Xorg installation thing. Yeah, there it is. Let me just search for this Libatomic Ops one. I thought we had that. No, okay. So, Neon, we haven't got. So let's open it in this window. No, it's not there. NSS we have. That's one of the uh, earlier ones we installed. Open LDAP. Open LDAP. If we connect to an LDAP server, um, I have installed LDAP before. Even though I've got an LDAP server and um, built um, LibreOffice with this built in, but it's it's unnecessary for this this uh, demonstration. So we'll skip that one. Poplar, I think we've got. Yeah, that looks like that's there. PostgreSQL. Um, database. Not really bothered by that, I don't think. Um, well, I haven't said that is recommended we're looking at, so maybe we should install that. May, may um, help the database part of LibreOffice. Redland, we've uh, installed that in the last hour or two. Um, Surf, we haven't got. And Unix ODBC, so there's another database type thing we haven't got. Then there's a load of, well, yeah, very, very big load of um, optional packages. Um, some, some you might want to install anyway, there's things like MariaDB. Um, if you're intending to use KDE frameworks, i.e. KDE 5 or Plasma 5, you may want to go and install that before you install OpenOffice so that it can um, change its behavior or change its looks for KDE frameworks. Um, normally, I w well, I do use KDE, um, but it's such a big package, that's why I've sort of left it towards the end. It's quite an involved one. Um, and it's... It's only, um, although the frameworks and KDE is installed, there's only a handful of um, packages, apps that are actually uh, got instructions in BLFS to install. Um, so rather than risk trying to get some working that are not listed, although it does say that you know you can use an example, make, build, install that they've got. I think there is a possibility that some of them may, may not work, may, may not be that straightforward. I'm sure most of them will be, but I'm just going to be sticking to the, again, to these instructions in the book for this demonstration. But of course, if you're building it yourself, you've got time to do this, or you want these things, then um, you can go ahead and do the ones that are not, not in the book. So as I say, KDE is just being installed as a demonstration here, not, not, not for you. So that's why I'm not, I'm not installing it now. Um... So yeah, we've got a couple of these, like NASM anyway, and Lib Paper we've already got, I think. Okay, so that looks like we've got a hold of all the packages we need that are recommended. So let's see. So this one's just got a couple of de optional dependencies. One's off-site. 
and one looks like we've already installed so let's go ahead with the install for this So there's a couple of extra options here. Enable drivers, enables building of drivers that were installed by default in previous versions. So that may be useful. This parameter enables the building of driver configuration libraries that were installed by default in previous versions. So it doesn't sound like there's any harm in installing them. There may be something there that you may use or need. Maybe they're drivers for different databases. So let's add them on. Okay, there's a build command gone in. Right, that's built successfully. So let's now become root and install Unix ODPC. And that's done. So some information about configuration there you may want to read. Um, but I think as we're only installing it for dependency for LibreOffice, there's uh, nothing really else to do. I think if there was something important there uh, for getting um, things working, like for LibreOffice, it would have been mentioned there. You know, there would be specific commands to set up to configure it. Okay, so we close that tab. We've got Surf next. So this needs APR Util. I have a feeling we've got that one. No, maybe not. Um, let's do a find. Oh, I know what it is. I'm probably thinking of this APR, which is different. So it's possible this APR util may need APR, but let's see. We've got scones next to do. Docbook XL, we've got, let's just open that so that it link goes to a different colour. XSL, yep, we've got that. So we can download scones. So install scones by running the following commands as your root user. So nothing's built with scones as the ordinary user, all done as root. So we'll just copy all these commands in and paste them. And that's finished. Okay, that's not surprising. The fact that there's um, files there we can't delete means we did everything as root. So we'll just sudo that to remove that package and shut that down. So, yeah, APR util needs APR. So let's drag that one over here. 
see what APR needs, nothing, so let's fetch it. So just a straightforward copy and paste on this one. Um, now we can install with make install and that's complete. Close that, API details next. Uh, this has uh, just got some optionals which we're not going to do. So we've got some extra command explanations here. Um, that one got in the command there to enable a plugin. Open SSL with crypto to enable another plugin. Um, and if we've got Barclay or Berkeley, I'm not sure how that's pronounced. Probably Berkeley if it's American. Um, use this switch to compile with the APR DBM plugin. I think this used to be installed by default in Linux from scratch and it's not anymore. Um, so it probably would have been there in the past. But I'm not going to install it now, it is uh, an option. So, oh, in fact, I'll just notice this PostgreSQL is uh, an option and we're going to build that as a recommended package for LibreOffice so I think I might go and do that now let's move that across here yeah so let's remove API util um, this hasn't got any requirements just optional uh, packages so let's go straight and fetch it So uh, we need to have a dedicated user in a group to install this. So we become the user, a super user, and add the user in the group. There are several configuration uh, configuration items that add additional functionality with optional packages to PostgreSQL. So use configure help. I'm not going to bother doing that because this is just a recommended package. It's not something that we're definitely we're not building it because we want to build it, it's being built because it's needed or recommended, so uh, I won't bother with that. I would do if it was something that was important to me, but it's, it's not particularly important, so um, we can go ahead and uh, build this as the normal user. Let's just check the commands, see if there's anything here. Yeah, there is some stuff we can add in here. So these are probably switches they've identified. For example, Perl. Perl's always going to be here. Python and so on. And TCL if you've got TCL installed. So let's copy that set in first. 
and then the configure and let's check these commands so we've got doctor so it's just telling where to put the documented uh, documentation enable thread safety tells you what that does and then concurrent threads so open SSL to allow open SSL encrypted connections so I imagine if you were to use this in anger you'd probably want that let's add it in in case that's something that LibreOffice can use because this is the reason why we're, main reason why we're installing this um, with Perl builds the PL Perl server side language again that may be something you'd want or possibly open uh, LibreOffice can use with Python adds the server side language again uh, if you want Python 2 support you have to say Python equals user bin Python 2 otherwise Python 3 is used by default so again this may be something that's used and there's PL TCL server side language so let's set that in as well Okay, I, I did wonder if that TCL will fail because we, we have got it installed. So let's remove it. Right, that configures work now. So let's make make the package.
okay that's built as it says it's ready to install so let's just read this so I don't think we're going to run this as a server uh, it's about testing so we can go straight to install install and install the docs It's done, we didn't make any of the extra programs. If you only intend to use PostgreSQL as a client to connect to another server on another machine, your installation is complete and you should not run the remaining commands. So that's us done then. Uh, right, so let's clean up. Delete that tab and back to API Util. So let's copy this configure command again. I think we're examining some of the options. Um, yes, that's right. It was because of these two options it made me look up here, didn't it? And I saw PostgreSQL. Yeah, so uh, actually it looks like we can just accept the defaults now. Um, I'm assuming it will pick up this automatically, being it's not mentioned here um, as a switch. So let's run it and see if it does actually mention that it's found it at the end of the configure. Well, it doesn't actually. Uh, so let's just run the configure command with the help and search for PostgreSQL. All right, let's try without the P in case it's capitalized. Okay, it needs to know the location. Let's see if there's anything else there. No, I didn't really say. Let's uh, get the PostgreSQL up and just see what does it need? PostgreSQL location. I assume it's going to be a user then. I assume this isn't going to be installed, but never know. Let's do sudo update db. Shouldn't surprise me. And this. So it's in user bin. Okay, so we'll give that command, uh, that directory to the path for this command. So let's recall the configure command, which is that one there. We want to add in that equals. Uh, user bin, wasn't it? Rather than looking for it, user bin equals the yeah, it wants a directory. Okay, so it hasn't complained. Let's see if we can see anything about PostgreSQL now. 
So there's where it's searching for ODBC, SQLite, GDPM. No, I still can't see anything about it. I think GDBM was installed as part of Linux from scratch. It looks like why it's found the header there for it. Uh, no, I don't understand that. So I think we shall make that and if there is a problem it will fail and we will just remove that PostgreSQL I'm not sure exactly how this works oh, I seem to not complain so let's just do the make install Yep, seems to be okay. I'm still not sure whether it's actually utilised PostgreSQL or not. But if it mattered, you'd have to um, research into understanding how it uses it and how to prove it and so on, how to prove it's in use. So we've now got the dependencies for uh, Surf. We can copy this and install this one. Okay, so there's lots of set commands. And then it's built with this scones command at the end. That's done, so we can install. So that's complete. Move that tab. We've got something called Neon Next, which needs some optionals, which we've got two of. So that's okay to go with that. So I've got one set command and we've got the command explanations here with SSL that's included and with libxml2 forces use libxml2 instead of expat so they've not put that in so we'll just go with expat uh, so that's the one that was built with Linux from scratch and we've also tested that as well because we would have ran the um, unit tests, a regression test for that, so that's probably the better of the two in, in that situation. Okay, install and we're done. So libatomic ops, no dependencies. Oh, sorry, I've already done it, haven't I? <laughs> Thinking of something else. Uh, yeah, looks like we just need to copy and paste this. And we can install. So, Seleucine. We've got the required dependency and the recommended. 
so we can fetch this package and there's a patch for it as well okay they're both downloaded so let's extract oh, I've typed in the wrong thing on the auto completion so I need, oh right it's core Seleucine core So there's one uh, command there which is included in the CMake command so we can just copy and paste the uh, build instructions, the build commands. Right, so that's built OK. We can install it. And that's complete. So we're back to LibreOffice. Um, we can. Just check. Yeah, so the one I didn't do is open LDAP. Now, because I haven't built it, built it, um, we're going to have to add a switch. When I was testing this, I found we needed another switch to tell it to tell the office that um, we haven't got uh, LDAP installed. So um, let's start by expanding the package. So we've got LibreOffice 6.2 it is. Oh, actually, I should have read the important notice. Let's get rid of this back to how we were. Right, it says unlike other packages, we assume that you've not yet unpacked the package. This is because the uh, dash dash no overwrite the uh, switch is needed in case you unpack as the root user well luckily I haven't and we haven't been doing that anyway so let's copy the commands I've got here which includes this no overwrite the uh, switch and uh, go with what the book says again you shouldn't really do, be doing any commands as root except for the install commands because obviously the, it's, the install commands are putting files into the system directories same with the configure commands a lot of them are being put in system directories so you need to gain super user access to um, be able to do that but everything else you should be doing as um, as a, a normal user so that's extracted so the first thing we've got to do is to do a set to fix a mismatch with boost recent version of boost then it says create sim links to tarballs from the source directory so they won't be downloaded again. So we'll do that. It's okay. If you've downloaded the translations tarball, create a sim link. So we'll do that. How 
how does that work? Oh yes, it's pointing to the tar file. So but we've downloaded, so that's okay. Um, let's check that that's actually pointing at the right place. External tarballs. Yep, they're all. If if these were not pointing at the correct length, then I think they flash red with white writing, with right uh, lettering. So the fact that they are all bright blue shows that the link is correct. So during the build process, some packages will be downloaded, including ones listed as recommended and optional dependencies, if they're not present on the system. Because of this, build time may vary from the published time more than usual. And due to the large size of the package, you may prefer to install it in opt instead of user. Depending on your choice, replace prefix by user or by opt LibreOffice 6203. So what I shall do is what we've done before with these opt packages. If um, we go to the opt directory, push, push directory. Uh, let's, oh, we didn't need to do that actually. Oh, I've done it again. <laughs> don't know why I keep pressing Control D today. Uh, new window and let's zoom in. All right, let's go back. Sources, PLFS, Libra. Office. Right, so what I wanted to do was become the uh, super user. Let's go to the opt. So, if you remember with the opt directory, we're installing rather large packages um, and we've got sim links with an un unversioned name pointing to the versioned directory where all the files are. So, let's do the same with the LibreOffice. So we'll make a directory that is a version name of the package we're about to install. So there it is there. And in fact if I become the real root uh, go to opt you can see the uh, color highlighting so you can see the sim link is in like light blue cyan and you can see what it's pointing at in this case it's dark blue so it's a it's a directory so you can see that um, LibreOffice is here that we just created the directory so now what we need to do is create a sim link uh, so LibreOffice becomes LibreOffice 6.2.03 becomes LibreOffice without the version number And there you go, you've got LibreOffice pointing at LibreOffice 6.2.03. So if we control D twice, come back to where we were, we can now this do this export LO prefix equals forward slash USR forward slash LibreOffice. So that should be there now. So prepare LibreOffice for compilation by running the following commands. So as a, what I'll do, I'm pretty sure this will fail. Uh, let's do these set commands first. And then run this autogen. It actually says, ah, oh, actually it says with system all held up there. I wonder if I just need to delete that. I don't think I did that when I was testing this. Let's copy the rest of that, see if that works. So we haven't got LDAP, so I'm going to leave this with the system LDAP out. Um, yeah, the switch I did before was without system open LDAP, so I wonder if you need to specifically tell it, or maybe just by leaving it out, it tries to build its own copy or something, I don't know. But let's see what happens with this.
Right, so maybe that's the problem I had before. I didn't remove this switch. It's not complained. Okay, it's saying there's a problem with Java Home. I was not explicitly informed with this JD Home configure script. Attempted to find a Java Home automatically, but apparently it failed. In case Java Home is incorrectly set, some projects will not be built correctly. Well, that's strange. It should be set because we configured Java. Yeah, and it's pointing it up to JDK, which is also correct. Yeah, and there is all the binaries. So let's um, rerun this and specifically set it in case that causes a problem. So with JDK home equals dollar Java underscore home. Let's see if we get another warning. It's strange actually because I just noticed that it does test that Ant is working and Ant needs Java. So, uh, yeah, I can't explain that. Uh, maybe it's just uh, the configure script being a bit finicky. But we haven't got that error now or that warning because we've specified it explicitly. So, um, what I should do before I go any further is just shut down CMonkey to make sure it retains these two tabs, save me having to set them up again um, in case we do need to crash out, which I'm expecting to happen. So, what's the estimate time for this build? It's oh yeah, 63 SPU, so it's going to be a couple of hours, I guess, in total, but let's start it. And we'll do a time as well and see how it goes. So straight away it's downloading stuff that it needs. And there's a few of these it does before it actually starts compiling. So if it's going to crash it could be 5 or 10 minutes or maybe half an hour. So I seem to remember it was quite early on it crashed. Um, but after that it was okay as I remember. So we'll just see how it goes.
Okay, well that's failed for some unknown reason. Um, let's see if we can pile that error output for details, which I guess is what this is down here. I'm not sure what it means. Um, I'm going to recall the make command and see if it just fails at the same place. Strange, I can't get this right. Yeah, it looks like it's the problem I had before. The whole machine is locked up now, I can't click anywhere. Oh, hang on, no, this has come back. The mouse is not working though, <laughs> so let's just see what happens. You see the cursor, I've moved onto the desktop and it's still like an I-beam type cursor, it's just not changing. And I can't click on or highlight anything. Um, keyboard's still working. And you can see the um, top still working as well, so we'll just keep an eye on this, see what happens to it.
Okay, and so that's finished. Um, I've still got problems with the mouse, and I can't fathom out what it is. I can't do anything. Um, can't even scroll. So, um, as I can see, the installation command. I'm going to run that now. Uh, make distro pack install. Um, and then I'm going to try and save this session and reboot and try and carry on. In fact, I might even just, because I can't use the mouse, I won't be able to click on the, um, on the uh, button to get the menu up. So I think what I'll do is I'll just shut down completely and then um restart the session so um, let's do that now Not an ideal way to shut down, but um, yeah, the cursor's come back now. <laughs> right, yeah, so that seems to be working. Let's reboot it. Okay, so what I'll do, I'll all I'll do is get Sea Monkey back up again. And luckily, it's retained where we were, and I'll just get a terminal up quickly. And let's just zoom it in a bit again. And I'll carry on. So, if you installed op, uh, in opt LibreOffice, which you did, issue the following commands as you uh, root user. So, let's become the root. And paste these in. Alright, okay, the LO prefix will have been lost actually. So, let's set that. user slash okay so now hopefully I should be able to do this yep and then update desktop database we need to do so it's saying um, that can be started from Moon Newton from the terminal this week can be started with LibreOffice command and the modules with LibreOffice hyphen hyphen module command respectively where, where module is one of base, calc, draw, impress, math or writer. Modules cannot be started using a shell unless the script names. If, oh, it cannot be used, cannot be started using the shell script names. If LO prefix is other news unless Hello prefix bin directory is appended to pass. Okay, oh I didn't don't think I did all the oh yes, yeah we did look at these things didn't we? Uh, no in fact we didn't, but these are optional things obviously that um oh, I didn't see this last time without Java, we could use that actually. But, um, anyway, it's built okay, so let's quickly try some of them. And you can see it's added all these in. So this is the LibreOffice main program, which you can get into each of the individual um, 
pieces of software associated with LibreOffice. That's the database starting. It wants to connect to a database, so I haven't got one. Um, that's the spreadsheet. Again, we can do some quick tests. I'll do the equals at plus one is better. So yeah, that works fine. Office draw. So this is like a drawing package. I'm not sure how this is used. I've never never used this or not uh, before. So it's a bit beyond me. Um, I guess maybe there's some things here we can do. Yeah. Okay, so it's a bit like the sort of standard drawing type thing. So that's that one. Um, impress. I think this is like the PowerPoint type thing. Yeah, it is. So there's some default templates there and some sort of thing to uh, the actual PowerPoint program. Mass. This is a um, like a formula designer thing. I think there's something equivalent in Office, as far as I remember. So you can have x divided by two, for example, there. And lastly, there's the um, word processor thing. And again, you can see the um, spell checker in action. And again, you can alter the font colors and background there and so on, center the text. So pretty standard stuff. So that's LibreOffice done. Um, I was hoping to, but I, I, I had this inkling there wouldn't be enough time to do Firefox or Thunderbird. So I'll plan to do them in my next session, in my next video. Um, and then hopefully the last one uh, will be for uh, building KDE 5. Um, and then I'll probably do an add-on one with the odd utility that are dotted around, like say for example Inkscape and GIMP and so on. Um, so that's that. Thank you very much for watching again and see you on the next video. Goodbye.